Uh, okay, so today we're going to be talking about web service, web services and the LAMP stack. So first we're going to talk about what the stack is. So the stack includes a web server, which is a type of application, a database and a different type of application. Then what we call the application layer, right? So that's that's the code that actually runs your website. Um, and then we're going to talk about an example of the stack, which is LAMP. Uh, stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. These are the most commonly used, uh, most commonly used uh, web application stack out there. Uh, probably most websites use some form of LAMP. Uh, so then I'm going to talk about the components, right? So what what LAMP actually stands for, and, and, you know, what what these uh, pieces contain. And um, then we're going to talk about a little bit about how to monitor these services and make sure that they're working right. Uh, so, you know, what, what, how to configure them, uh, how to, what, what kind of traffic you should expect over the network from them, what, what they look like as processes. Uh, okay, so first, we're going to talk about how the web works. Um, so, recall last time that uh, when you connect to a server on the internet uh, through your web browser, that you connect up to port 80, right? So, um, and then the protocol for this communication is either HTTP or HTTPS, <coughs> which is uh, just the encrypted form of HTTP. Uh, so, so what really happens here? It, it, it's, it's, it's quite simple. You can, if you open up Wireshark and then you go to a very simple web page, right, you'll see two, two things going on. First, you send a GET request, which says you want to get a certain web page. In this case, I'm getting my web page from the cs.umb uh, 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 domain. Right? You can see the domain here in this line, cs.umb.edu. And then part of the request is uh, slash tilde Henry Z. Lowe, right? So this is my request to the server. This is, this is I'm asking for my web page. Uh, and then, and then uh, what happens is that the web server sends back a response with all the HTML in it. Right? So this response is just a packet, right? And this packet uh, has a whole bunch of header information, right? It tells me what, 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 what server it's running, uh, the, the PHP, Mod Python, you know, all the stuff. It probably actually shouldn't be telling me. Um, and then, and then uh, down here, you'll see that you, we have a lot of uh, encoded data. And if you guys know what HTML looks like, this is the beginning of uh, all the HTML, right? So. So that's it, right? So when you connect to a web server, all you're doing is you're sending a packet saying you want to get a certain page, and then it sends you back the request, uh, uh, sends you back the response with all the data that you're requesting, uh, if, if the data exists. Uh, but what's really going on behind the scenes, right? So here in Wireshark, that's all you see over there, the request and the response, right? And, uh, but but what's really going on behind the scenes is that your, your request and your response is handled by the application, right? The web application, they call it. And the web application sits on top of a web server. And the web server sits on top of an operating system, right? So, uh, so it, it's a piece of the computer. Uh, and when the application gets your request, right, it has to decide what kind of content do I want to show you, right? Uh, I mean, Depending on the website, it might be different. Like, you know, if it's just my homepage, then it doesn't matter who you are or what kind of data you send it. As long as, uh, you know, you request the same web page, I'm just going to feed everyone the same thing, right? Uh, we call that a static page because it's a, there's no dynamic data there, right? It's just a plain old HTML, you know, maybe some CSS, JavaScript, you know, all these uh, client-side uh, technologies. Uh, but if you wanted something more complicated, like say Facebook or Craigslist or something, where you have a whole database of information, right? Then you have to go and process the data, right? You have to process the request, uh, and then query the data, and then uh, and then send back some kind of uh, updated response, right? For example, like <coughs> uh, if you go to Craigslist every day, there's going to be different stuff there. So. What, what the web application has to do is it has to query the database, ask it for like the, new, uh, the newest list of stuff that matches whatever you're searching for, and then the database sends it back to the data. And then the web application kind of wraps it all up, puts it in an HTML, and, and sends it back to you. All right? Uh, so yeah. So here I have the database 
in the application in the web server on different machines. That's not always the case. Sometimes the database is on the same machine. You know, it's just a matter of a, about how you decide to configure it. Um, okay. So some examples of web servers, right? Uh, there's Apache, which is the most uh, commonly used one. Because it's a free and open source. You can use it on Linux. It's really easy. You can also use it on Windows. Right? And then there's IIS, which runs on Windows servers. That's pretty common, too. Uh, so applications are written usually in uh, some kind of scripting language like PHP, Perl, Python, uh, ASP.NET. There's also Java. And, you know, you can actually use any language, right? I know some people use C. Uh, don't recommend it, but, I mean, you, you could if you want to. Um, and then for databases, there's, there's a whole bunch of different kinds. There's MySQL and Microsoft Access and, and, and Postgres and, and who knows, right? There's a whole bunch, a bunch of different kinds of databases. And these are just... Uh, what we call SQL compliant databases, right? They all have a standard called SQL, SQL, that you can use to talk to them, to communicate with a uh, database. But then there's actually a whole class of databases which don't use SQL. But we're not going to talk about those. Um, all right, so talk a little bit about what databases actually do. Right? Uh, so, so they store information, right? They store them in tables. And uh, applications query C uh, SQL servers in order to communicate with them and get data back, right? And um, and the queries are always authenticated, right? So there's there's like a username, password, tables, you know, all this stuff to make sure that that whoever's asking for the data is actually authorized to receive the data, right? Uh, and there's a standard, like I said, the SQL is a is a standardized language. So here's an example, right? Insert into my table field one, field two, field three, values, test, and null. So what does that do? That just tells the SQL server that I want to put this data into the server, and it looks like this, test and null, right? So th three strings or something like that, right? And then it just stores it somewhere. Well, actually, it stores it in the table called my table. Right? Uh, and then here's a select statement, right? That's when you want to get data from the server. So select title price from book where price is greater than one, right? So that'll just get you uh, uh, the title and the price of every book that whose price is more than one. Right? So SQL is kind of easy to read. Um, you know, you don't have to learn it, but it's 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 not that hard, and and it might come in it might come in handy uh, later on. So about the application layer. So like I said, they're written in a lot of different languages. Um, you can just use any kind of language, I think, actually. Uh, you can write your own. Um, and they handle the requests and responses and interactions with the database. They're kind of like the thing in the web server that glues everything together, the whole web application, right? Uh, so we're going to talk more about these. Um, okay. So LAMP stack. So LAMP, like I said, stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Uh, so Linux is your operating system. Uh, Apache is the web server. MySQL is the SQL server, the database. And PHP is the language, right? Uh, and there's a lot of variations on this. Uh, PHP, for example, could also stand for Perl, Python, whatever, right? But most commonly, it's meant to uh, stand for PHP. So this is the most popular web application stack, and probably the, I mean, probably the reason, uh, an important reason being that uh, it's free and open source, right? So you can just download the whole stack for free. It's pretty awesome. Whereas, you know, if you went with the Microsoft solution, you'd have to buy a Microsoft server, and then you configure IS, and then you'd have to get Microsoft Access, and I don't know, all that stuff, right? And you'd probably pay to shell out hundreds of dollars for that. Whereas with LAMP, you, it's completely free. And you can run it on, on like, a $30 computer, you know. I, 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 I do that at my house. So, um, so yeah. So, uh, basically, I just replaced the diagram that I had before about the web application, like the stack with, uh, with uh, you know, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So how does this actually work, right? So Apache runs the PHP application. And, but Apache is the thing that's listening on port 80 for requests, 
and then it sends off the request to PHP, and then PHP handles it uh, whatever way it wants, right? And then, uh, so, so PHP takes in the request data, constructs some kind of HTTP response, right? So, so you ask the web server, hey, I want this web page, right? And then it's up to, up to the PHP application to decide what kind of web page it wants to spit back out at you, right? Uh, and, you know, that might involve getting some data, some data from the database first, you know, what else? Um, so Apache should always listen on port 80 because that's the standardized port. Should some, sometimes it will listen on port 443 too because that's the uh, that's the HTTPS port, you know, for, for your encrypted connections. Uh, and the database should only listen to the web server, right? Because uh, I mean, you wouldn't want anybody querying your database, right? Because your database control uh, contains very like useful information, right? And and you know why should anybody be able to query your database? Only your web application is using it. So only only the computer that 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 has the web application should have access to your database server, and that's kind of important. Uh, okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how Apache actually runs. So Apache, uh, when it, when you start it up, runs as root, right? Uh, you have to run as root in order to open up ports that are lower than 1024, so that's why Apache is root. There's probably other reasons too. Um, and, uh, and the way Apache runs is it, it spawns off what's called worker threads, right? So there, it spawns off several little uh, uh, processes which handle different HTTP requests, right? So that way you don't get blocked waiting for someone else's you know, request to complete and stuff like that. And I think it actually it grows these as it needs. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, anyways, these worker threads are always, always run, or are usually run under the owner uh, www data, right? So uh, this is kind of important because uh, if it was running as root and then somebody compromised the web server, then you know now they're they're on your server and they're running as root. So that's not a good thing. So now uh, you know even if somebody compromised the process, they're only www data and they have uh, very limited. Uh, you know, rights to mess around with your machine with. Uh, okay, so uh, so I, I I got that from just running a ps right psauxs. Uh, and then here, if you type netstat, you can see that Apache is listening on port 80 on every interface. Uh, you know, and it's open to the outside world, right? And if you if you configure HTTPS, the secure socket layer, then you'll also see that it's going to listen on port 443. So if you guys remember in our talk about the Linux file system, uh, most configuration files are in Etsy. So that's the case with Apache 2. Um, uh, all the configuration files are in Etsy Apache 2, right? Which is a folder containing all the configurations. Um, so uh, something that's interesting to note, Apache uses a lot of what's called mods, right? So mods are just things that modify know how Apache runs, right? So PHP is a type of Apache mod. SQL, MySQL is a type of Apache mod. There's a, a security mod called Mod Security, right? Um, and the way Apache handles these things are uh, is uh, it puts all the mods in the mods available folder, right, which is right here. And then if you activate a mod, what it does is it, it links, it, it creates a shortcut to the mod that is available that you want to enable in the mods enabled folder, right? Does that make sense? So, so all the mods are here in the mods available folder, and when you want to enable, a, like for example, PHP, right? Then PHP is going to show up here in the mods enabled. Right? It just creates a link, uh, and then if you remove the link, then then uh, uh, then then the mod is now disabled. Make sense? So it's like a symbol. Yeah, it's just a symbol. Uh, it just creates symlinks every time you enable or disable it. When you enable a mod, it removes the same symlinks when you disable the mod. And uh, the same thing about sites, right? So an important thing to know about Apache is that even though all the configuration files are here, the actual websites are not here. The actual websites are, uh, you know, you can put them anywhere you want, but they're, they're referred to in the sites available uh, folder, right? So there's this 
syntax I'll show you later of how you uh, specify where your where your actual web application sits. And uh, and these folder the sites available and the sites enabled folder work a lot like how uh, the mods folder works. Uh, so all your sites are in sites available, and then when you want to enable a site, it just creates a sim link in sites enabled to one of your sites available, right? So pretty similar to uh, how mods work. Um, yeah, so I talked about mods. Uh, so logs are in var log Apache 2, right? There's an error log and an access log. The access log is huge, right? Every time someone connects to your web server, you're going to get some data on your access log. And the error log logs all your errors, right? So if you're writing some PHP code, something went wrong, you're not sure what, it's probably going to show up in the error log. Um, and then, uh, MySQL. Uh, okay. so MySQL runs as its own user. It's called MySQL, uh, and uh, it, it has its own. And in, in inside MySQL, right, there's this whole other notion of uh, users and, and permissions and stuff like that. So, uh, so I just want to make sure that you understand that there, there's there's different level of users and permissions, right? There's, there's users and permissions in, in Linux, right? And then there's users and permissions inside of MySQL. And they're not really linked together. Um, okay. So uh, it listens on port 3306. Uh, and when you just install it, it only listens to requests from the local host, which means the, the computer that it's on. It's a pretty safe configuration. Uh, it's pretty good. PHP. So not much to say about PHP. It's a, it's a language, right? You install it. It's, a, it's also a mod, right? An Apache mod. Uh, and then the, the configuration file for PHP is in php.ini, se php5, apache2, php.ini. So in here you can set things like a, like a, like you guys ever use upload forms, right? You, you, you know, you click a button and then just select a file to upload, right? Uh, PHP automatically has like limits on how big these files can be, right? So you can you can change that limit. For example, in PHP.ini, you can do a lot of other things too. That's just an example. Um, so the error messages. There's no real logs for PHP. The uh, the error messages by default go to the Apache logs. Okay. So all right. So that's it for the slides. Then we're gonna move to an interactive session. Are there any questions? So why was the uh, MySQL was named on the part for, for what, what, what's it listening for? It's listening for SQL queries, uh, uh, ideally coming from the web server. But it, I mean, you can actually just connect to a SQL database using my, the, the MySQL client and then just initiate queries yourself. You know, you can disable that too. So you could have like one machine with, with the database yeah, that's the I think that's the standard configuration. Uh, if you if you want scalability, that's what you do. You separate your databases from your web servers. But uh, if you were just setting it up, for example, right, you might want to, uh, you know, if you just want to test things out, you might want to put them all on one machine so you don't have to, you know, go mess around with two of them. Any other questions? So we're talking about uh, the web application stack, right? Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Okay. Yeah. Is, is it safe to run Apache? I mean, it has to be. Uh, yeah. Depends. You know, Apache usually is pretty solid. The problem is you got to worry about is the application layer, uh, the application code that you put on top of it. Uh, because if you think about it, right, Apache's been around and people use it like it runs something like more than half all the web, right? So, so people have been banging against it for a while, so it's pretty safe. But, uh, but the application code that runs on top of it is different for everybody, and uh, and so there isn't that kind of intense auditing that goes on with that kind of code, and and uh, you know, so so that's really where the vulnerabilities come in. Uh, 
is on the application layer. Not to say Apache is completely safe, but it, I, I, I'd say it's a lot safer than, than probably the applications are running. 